Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in the Chapter 3 part of this playlist, which I'm calling Characterizing Multivariate Data. And let's jump right into today's topic, which is covariance. And we're going to look at it for a bivariate random variable. So let y be a random vector of two variables. Let y1, 2, all the way to n are the n observation vectors, which are measured from a sample of n units, subjects, or objects. So the ith observation is this. So it's a, it's a vector of 2 by 1. Now, we've looked at measures of variability in the univariate setting. So if we want to look at, say, the variability associated with component 1 or you know variable 1, we look at the variance of y1. And it's just sigma 1 squared, which is the variance of y1. And as it always, it's the expected squared distance from its mean. We can look at the variability of the second component, which is the variance of y2, denoted by sigma 2 squared. It's the variance of y2, which is the expected value of the squared distance. Now, since this is a multivariate class, we kind of have to look at things jointly. So how do they both vary? Well, that's going to be defined as the covariance between y1 and y2. It's going to be denoted by sigma 1, 2 and covariance of y1, y2. And it's the expected value of the product of the deviations. It's this. Now, let's examine this a little bit more. So roughly, the, the sign of the covariance shows the tendency of the linear relationship between the variables. And the key word is linear relationship a line, either slope up or slope down, you know, negative slope or positive slope. And we can see that in more detail by these bullet points. So if we look at these two, like in the upper right quadrant of a graph, so each variable is above its mean. And if we take this subtraction, we get positive numbers in both of them. And the product is positive. So think of it as the upper right quadrant. And then the lower left quadrant, both of these are negative because we're below the mean in both of those cases. But a negative times a negative is a positive. And in the upper left and lower right, these, uh, these differences have opposite signs. So when we take the product, it's always negative. Okay, and I in a graph on the next page, I think will help illustrate this even more. The, the sign of the covariance shows the tendency of the linear relationship between the variables, a positive slope or negative slope. However, the magnitude of the covariance, it's so not easy to interpret because it's not normalized. And that's actually the, the next video is we're going to normalize this covariance so we can compare it from you know, one bivariate sample to another. Um, here we have a plot of the CARS data. The R code isn't important, but I will, as always, post it to the comments. So we have the data here. The speed at which the car is going and the stopping distance is on the y-axis. So if we look at this data, all these variables, oh, and these bars are the means. So that's, they're called marginal means. It's the mean of the speed. And then if we just look at the stopping distance, that's the mean of the stopping distance. So all the data in this upper right quadrant are all positive. Because we, if we take that value minus the mean and that value minus the mean this way, we get positive numbers. And, and then the positive times the positive is positive. Now, all these in the lower quadrant are negative. You know, if we take this minus the mean, which is a bigger value, and this minus the mean, which is a bigger value, we get two negatives, but the product of two negatives is positive. And then the upper left and lower right, it's these the signs are just opposite, so we get negative values. And if you look at these dots, there's more, there's going to be more, I'm going to call them positive dots, you know, where the product is positive down here and up here. So the covariance of this data should be positive. And another way to think about it, if the slope of this line is positive like it is, this is a simple linear regression line, then the covariance is positive. If the simple linear regression line would have been had of a negative slope, then it's negative. And so 
um, that's it. And so we'll we'll come back to this graph. And so measures of sample variability are just sort of the sample equivalents to the population. So we look the sample variance, as you know, is the sum of the square differences from the sample mean. Yeah, you know, adjusted for bias. In the same way for the variance for y2, the second component. It's this. It's the average squared distance adjusted for bias. Now the covariance, how do y1 and y2 vary together, is we look at the covariance. So it's the sum of these, the product of these deviations divided by n minus 1. And this will be, in this example, should be positive. So this just tells us, you know, if it's positive, then the, the data sort of follows a trend upward. And if it's negative, it follows a trend downward. If we look at the cars data, and we look at the variance of speed, we get 27,959. But that's we could also look at it as the cars data, the first column of cars data. It's the same, and it has a name, so we can call it by a speed if we, you know, like this if we want to. Variance of distance is 664, or we can look at the second column and. And then the covariance between speed and distance is 109, or we could look at it as the covariance of, you know, the first column and the second column, it's the same thing. Now here, what's interesting, if we look at the um, linear regression of, of uh, speed and distance, look at the slope of the line, 3.97. But now, if we take the covariance between the two variables divided by the variance of speed, we get the same value as the slope. So the slope of that line, the numerator is the covariance between the two variables, and then it's weighted by the variance of x, or the speed. And so it shouldn't be surprising that the covariance measures the linear relationship, right? Because that's it's used in de deriving the slope of that line. Now, the population covariance in matrix notation is this. So, capital sigma is we're going to denote the population covariance, and it's the expected value of these differences. The you know the the difference from the mean. But remember, these are vectors. So this y is actually y1, y2. This mean is, you know, it's a bivariate mean, so it's mu1, mu2, in the same way over here. Now, these are 2 by 1 vectors, and we can add them, and that's what we get here. So this is a 2 by 1 vector, and because it's transposed, it's a 1 by 2 vector. Now, to do this multiplication, you take the first row times the first column, which is this, First row, second column, which is this. Second row, first column. Second row, second column. But this expected value goes into each component, which we get this. But this is how we defined the variance for, you know, for variable 1, the variance of variable 2. This is the covariance, and this is the covariance. Now, the covariance, this is just the product of two, two uh, numbers. So the product is community. So we could switch this around. It's the same. So what I just said there is these two covariances are actually equal. Thus, the covariance matrix is symmetric. Now, the sample covariance matrix for S, we need the capital J, which is an N by N matrix of all ones. And it can be derived through J, which is a vector of all ones. And this is it. So this, well, this is step one in understanding the matrix form. So Y transpose, remember Y is our data matrix. Transpose means the rows and columns interchange. So instead of being vertical, they're now horizontal in a sense. And if we look at Y transpose J, remember these are all ones. So we take this first row and then add them. And then we do that for each column. So, and then we divide by m minus one. So we get it's a vector of all uh, y's. Oh, this should be two. So then we do it for this this row, 
times j each column and it adds them and this should be the mean of two y2 bar y2 bar y2 bar and i cracked it down here so now when we take these differences we get a, a two by n matrix right where we just have subtracted the mean from each data point now we combine this we take this and put it here and over here we transpose it so this this matrix is a two by n matrix this is an n by two so the product is a two by two so if you think about it this row times the its column we get this here the sum of the uh, differences squared differences we take this row times the second column and we get this then we take the second row times the first column you know so the second row of this times the first column of that we get this second row second column we get this multiply the n minus one but that's how we define the sample variance this is down the diagonal and then the sample covariance is on the off diagonals these these off diagonals are equal and so thus it's symmetric and then the last page here we're going to look at some properties the matrix one over n j now remember j is an n by n matrix of all ones this is symmetric right it's a constant vector i mean constant matrix of one over n it's called idempotent what that says if you take it times itself you get it back and i would investigate that matrix on your own to make sure it is idempotent and then if you're into the theory of linear models a symmetric idempotent matrix is what's called a perpendicular projection matrix so which that plays a part in linear models the matrix i minus 1 over nj is idempotent so the product of these is itself and that plays a part because when we uh yeah we'll come back to that so and if we look at this matrix we can left factor out a y transpose to get this now this is the, it's like it's a one you know in a sense it's the identity matrix but that times itself we get y transpose and then we multiply that in we get this here when we bring in a um transpose it, it goes into this and then goes into that so the the y transpose transpose is just y and then when you take the transpose of a product you take it into both of them and then switch the order which is this now you might think whoa shouldn't there be a transpose over the j but j is a symmetric matrix so it equals its transpose so we can just leave it j but then we can right factor out a y and now s we defined up here as one over n times the pro this uh, vector product but look we can right or left factor out a y transpose and we can right factor out a y right and that leaves the product of these two matrices but it's item potent so we just get it back so this is actually a shortcut formula for the sample variance and this is actually what everyone uses this is sort of the definition of it but this is the working definition and let's just look at a quick example calculating these and then call our quits for today so let's create uh, the cars data frame we have to make it a matrix and the reason we do that is when we take these matrix products it doesn't like to do it with the data frame it has to be a matrix so if we take the variance of y now remember y is a matrix it's an n or you know in this case it's a 50 by 2 uh, matrix and so the variance of y creates this covariance matrix so the variance is down the diagonal if you remember 27959 was the variance of speed 664 was the variance of distance and the covariances were 109 and it's the same it's so it's symmetric we could also just use the cove of y that also creates the covariance but here let's let let's uh, count the number of rows of y and, and store it to n so that's 50 create a vector of ones you know a, a 50 by one vector create this capital j matrix now this is a very large matrix it's 50 by 50 so if you print that out it'll scroll through your screen quite a bit then we take y transpose times identity matrix 
times j over n times y divided by minus 1, and, we, and that creates this covariance matrix. So it's exactly the formula that we used up here. Now, to prove that things are idempotent, or at least in this case, we have j over n times j over n. Does that equal just j over n? And it's true, so it is idempotent, at least in this case. And the identity matrix minus j divided by n times itself, does that equal itself? And the answer is yes. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.